Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Mishmash Monday, and uh, we got a couple good announcements to make today. Hope everybody's doing good. Hope you had a nice weekend. Um, a little bit crazy out there, so uh, I know you're, you've are you been adjusting your schedules and stuff. And my good buddy Cliff the other day was saying, John, we, we, we really need a challenge. And, and I've been racking my brains about uh, coming up with a challenge for... Um, for the next, especially now that we're, a lot of us are inside and things like that. So um, I wanted this challenge to be inclusive, that everybody can join in, and also that you don't need special tools or things like that. And uh, we are a tool channel, but I did come up with something I thought would be really good, being that uh, we're in March now, and uh, this would be a great time for the Birdhouse Challenge. Now that'll, uh, for a lot of us, it'll, you know, expand your horizons if you haven't done any kind of woodworking or anything like that. But for others, you know, it's a good chance that you could do this with your family. You could do this by yourself. You could do an over the top birdhouse. And, you know, I've been making birdhouses every year for years and I used to do it with the scouts all the time. But what a great opportunity for, uh, for us to, um, to get down in the shop, build something fun and something that's useful, especially to a bird in your neighborhood. So uh, I'm going to go through a, a few uh, criteria for it. Um, you know, it's it's nice to do an over-the-top one. You know, it doesn't have to be... So, I'll tell you, they make great gifts, too. A birdhouse is a fantastic gift for somebody. Uh, I know I uh, every Christmas I used to make birdhouses and give them away. And uh, let me show you a few that we have. And uh, so this way, you know, you don't have to get out and buy supplies. You can make it from anything you have around the house. So let's go check that. Now, out. the beauty of this challenge is that uh, you can make it a birdhouse with anything you have around. And these I made years ago. Uh, actually, they're made from cardboard. If you look here, uh, it's just cardboard, just regular cardboard. And uh, what you do is you put masking tape over the edges here. But that's, you know, and then once you... Uh, once you put it together, you just give it a coat. Right now, there's just a coat of shellac on here. But um, you can also put house paint. Anything on cardboard will uh, will last it through a season as long as you uh, you coat it. Like I said, you know, the rain, it'll last the season, which is uh, basically what you want. I made these little uh, ferrules that go in here. You can see out of a piece of PVC pipe. And I just turned it on the lathe a little bit just for fun and put it in. I have a, a bunch of these I made. But these also were great for decoration. If you wanted to put them in the, in a room or a porch or something like that, you could paint them up nice, put flowers on them. And uh, you can really have a good time. Just cardboard, regular now cardboard. I remember these from a, a recent video. And these are made from the PVC fence post. You know, you just uh, a piece of PVC fence post. You cut a... Uh, the 245s up here and then you take another piece and you cut the uh, along the edge here to make the roof so very easy to make and you put a wooden bottom in so uh that's a that's an easy alternative and then decorate it with some kind of i got these new old stock decals and uh these are very durable very uh weather durable and again we don't have any uh any perch there because the perch the problem with the perch is that the uh the birds like blue jays things like that will sit on the perch and eat the babies or whatever so that's why you don't have any perch on on most bird houses they're just for decoration now one year my girlfriend gave me this as a uh, a gift for christmas i just thought it was such a nice bird house you know I, I like the design it's like a little log house again these perches you want to avoid but uh it is a, a nicely made birdhouse. so what i did was i copied the design I made my own and I uh, I gave these out as Christmas gifts like a year later and, and these, this one here, uh, I did it very similar to that but I, I made it with the green top and, and I used the gun stock stain on it here so that's it and, and I made the chimney a little different but this is a really nice bird. Now here house. are some really simple designs. I made these for the, the scouts because I we used to build birdhouses with the scouts every year but uh, I would make a few and then let them decide which ones they want to build. This one here is very, now you can see, remember we said about the perch, but you can see this perch is just, just for decoration. I put this in if you wanted to hang this in a, in a, a room or something like that. Notice, uh, we have some ventilation holes because you have, want some ventilation in case it gets hot. But this is just shellacked. We got a little hole here to hang it. Uh, just shellacked, but, um, you can also put, uh, varnish or paint or anything you want on here. Here's another design here. This one here I was showing the, uh, this would be if you were uh, gonna, you can see here, um, if you wanted to put a, uh, a clean out hatch in, of some way in here, this is so you can clean out the uh, bird from year to year. You could take out the old nest, 
and then close it down so I'm, I'm telling you these are so much fun to make so rewarding especially if you see a bird getting to use now i showed you some really simple examples and uh you know anybody could do them and uh but you know that's not what we do here with this challenge you know because uh we're stuck inside we got time to really make something nice and i'm going to show you a little couple uh, nicer examples of bird houses that I made in the past. Um, I had a friend of mine, Pat Sheridan, I used to work with, and he lived on 115th Street. And uh, let me show you what his house looked like. Now, Patty lived in his house with his mom, and he I guess he was born there. They lived there a real long time. So when I came in with this uh, bird house for him, uh, he, his jaw almost hit the floor. And uh, the best part was when he brought it home, his mother, uh, who is, she's passed a while now, but uh, his mother was uh, so happy with this that she had it on her fireplace mantle and she used to, she used to look at it at night and I'll show you why in a minute because uh, I actually added on the little back porch there, uh, I added some, uh, a light and a switch uh, so that uh, they could look at it and, and here it is uh, in the front, uh, you can see the porch. There was actually lights underneath the porch, so at night it looked like this. And uh, and she used to love to look at it. It made me very happy to know that she enjoyed that all the way up to the time she passed. And uh, anyway, since he didn't put that outside, I made him a different birdhouse. I made him this one that he put, mounted on a pole in front of the house. And uh, this way the birds do get a, a house. And this one was a little bit different, but same thing, a little bit more ornate and uh and very good looking to so uh, i'm really to excited about this birdhouse challenge and i think you will be too i think you're really going to enjoy making one uh might be years since you've made one maybe you never made one but um one thing is we'll have it due by the uh the 20th will be the uh you know the day that it's finished uh the contest is closed on the 20th so anytime between the 10th and the 17th you could start sending in photos if you don't have your own channel or if you have your own channel you could put up a video but the 20th will be the due date that's in monday and uh, we'll have a mishmash uh, challenge reveal on that day and uh, i think it'll be a lot of fun and i'm looking forward to hope you okay are next up on the mosh uh i want to talk a bit a little bit about improvising hardware a couple people were asking me about certain screws and things like that. You know, in a, in a case like this where we're quarantined, so to speak, and really can't get out, and you don't want to wait. You know, let's say you want to order a certain screw, but, you know, you, Home Depot might not have it or you... You know, you, you don't want to order it and wait for it to come by mail. So sometimes uh, you can alter the hardware you have or make your own hardware. This is coming. I can't tell you how many times it's come in handy, especially those two pipe wrenches we did the other day. I had to make almost all that hardware and stuff. So let me show you some tricks and tips on making your own or altering your okay, own hardware. The first hardware. thing we're going to talk about is cutting threads. Now, I'm over here at my threaded rod section. You can see this is where I keep most of my threaded rod and things like that. So if I have a piece of threaded rod that I want to cut down and, and I'll show you how now, you Now many times uh, you'll need a specific length of a, of a bolt or something. If you have a long bolt and you need to shorten it, you're going to have to cut threads. And cutting threads is, is a skill that's so easy to do, but it's really something you have to practice at. Now, if you look at the end of here, you can see this was a discarded piece of threaded rod I picked out of the garbage. But you can see here, you see the end that end the way it's cut off a lot of times especially if it's cut with a uh, an abrasive wheel it makes it horrible cut so what we're going to do is we're going to cut off about uh, a quarter of an inch here make a clean cut and I want to show you how to do that and how important it is to be able to hold this in the vise. First thing you might be tempted to do is you have a long piece like this, you might want to put it into the vise, but you can damage the rest of the thread. You never want to put threaded rod in the vise because, uh, again, you know, this is that the points are very fragile, more or less. Now, you could wrap it in something like cardboard and things like that. It helps a little bit, but uh, the best thing to do is to make a, a small jig that you can hold it in that um that it can add pressure without damaging first thing the we're going to do is take a piece of scrap i have scrap blocks of wood all over the place especially by the cutoff saw just going to drill a down that's a 3 8 inch uh threaded rod that we want to hold so this is a 3 8 inch bit i'm going to drill a hole you know close to the middle right down the center now over the bandsaw we're just going to cut this in half hopefully right through the center of the hole now we cut the uh, 
cut the block in half. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the threaded rod and you see how it fits in there real nice. Again, it's the same, but because of the curve for the blade, there's going to be a little gap. You'll see a little gap there. And that's good because that's, what's going to be able to press the wood down around the threads and hold that nice and solid in the vise. Okay. Now we're going to bring it over to the vise and put it over here so that just it overhangs a little bit and, uh, and we'll make sure that the vise gets a good bite on this block of wood right in the middle and then tighten it up. And now you have a solid purchase on that. That's not going, that threaded rod is in there tight. Now we're going to cut off about three eighths of an inch down. We're going to cut it off and here's where it now gets I'm important. using a 24 teeth per inch hacksaw blade. And, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that straight across. Now the threads are at an angle this way, but I'm going straight across and I always like to put a little bit of cutting fluid on here, especially when I'm, um, using my hacksaw and it makes the blades last much longer. Now, when using a hacksaw, you draw a stroke, you pull back once or twice to establish a cut, a groove. You'll see that's established nicely and then you could start cutting. Okay, now when you get to the end here, you'll see there's always that little bit of hang off. Now, when you pull that off, you'll see you have a flat, straight cut. Now, look very closely at the end. That's a beautiful cut across there, but still there's a little bit of a wind up here. Now, the best thing you could do is you want to chamfer the end of the, of the, uh, the threads just a little bit down to make it much easier for the nut to start on. So we want to chamfer that. And the best way to do that, if you have a belt sander or something like that, you could just hold it and, and, and let that chamfer it naturally like this. Now that was in real time and look at how beautiful that is. Now we're going to hit it with the wire brush and uh, we're going to take it down to about an inch and show you how nice and clean that'll come out. Here we have a 3 8 by 16 inch nut just to check it out push it on here like this and look at how that spins on it goes on so nice and easy because that is a perfect uh end of what we did on there you see that that's the way exactly the way it should look and uh, that is a skill and especially when you start getting to the real small uh, screws and bolts because that's something you want to be able to do now we wanted to make a set screw like I said we needed a set screw so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a three-eighths of an inch because that's how long we need three-eighths of an inch piece of this we're going to do the same thing to the other end and then we're going to cut a slot in here Okay, and here's our 3 8 of an inch set screw, and you can see here, uh, whatever application you needed to use it for, you know, we just have it set in here that you could see what it looks like, and you could see here how nice this looks here. You know, nice little face on it, cut a slot in here. So you could make set screws, you could make uh, nuts, bolts, whatever, threaded rod is a great thing. If you're working thing. in the field or something, you don't have a lot of access to other equipment, um, when you put the uh, threaded rod into a vise or something you could put a, a nut down here make your cut and then when you take the nut off of this it will act almost as like a, a, a makeshift die and it'll straighten out any of the uh, the threading so that's one way you could do it but nothing beats taking this and chamfering the end and making it flat and smooth because it does come off so easy and go on so easy so it's uh it's something that you should really uh improve your so skill. closing uh, i can't tell you how many times i've had to cut down threads or things like that and and this has come in so handy so it's something you really you know you need to practice a little while until you get good enough at it that you could look at the end of the threads and tell right away if it's gonna thread on or not you know and i feel like i'm at that point and i've been I guess doing it for 35 years, 40 years, and but I'm so happy I know how to do it, and I hope you take a, a little time and, and practice that skill. So anyway, uh, looking forward to Birdhouse Challenge, April 20th. 
Uh, we got lots of time. You got three weeks. Uh, you could do a lot of them. So I hope you really uh, get started with that. And thanks so much for tuning in. Have a nice day. Take care now. Bye bye.